Welcome to the Free Court Show with your host, Jason Hartman. No, Jason's not a lawyer. He's just a regular businessman, a regular consumer. The legal system is broken and most people cannot access it. Jason and his powerful guests are here to help level the playing field so that you, the consumer, can better understand your rights, have options and recourse, and listen to the experts explore new products and services so that you can be an empowered citizen in the system. And now, here's your host, Jason Hartman. It's my pleasure to welcome Toby Unwin to the show. He is co-founder and chief innovation officer at Premonition Analytics and the inventor of Premonition Artificial Intelligence System. You're going to find this to be very interesting. And he is uh, also the creator of Lawyers by Winrate. Wouldn't it be nice if you can pick a lawyer based on whether or not they actually win cases? Now, you would think this would have been in place a long, long time ago, <laughs> and it is certainly overdue. So I can't wait to hear more about it. Toby, welcome. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Good to have you on the show, and you're coming to us from Orlando today. Is that correct? Absolutely. Sunny Orlando. Fantastic. It's sunny for a few more minutes. Until a big storm comes. This I know. Exactly. Those Florida storms are incredible. So what you're doing, I have to say, is really awesome, and I'm very excited about it. I can't wait to it really rolls out to the consumer on a wide basis because I think the legal system is a highly dysfunctional industry. There are other dysfunctional industries too, though, so I don't just want to pick on the legal system. But it's really awesome. Tell us about the problem first, and then let's talk about your solution. Problem is that we don't really know who the good lawyers are and the bad ones. People tend to pick lawyers based off firm reputation and nonsense like do they have nice offices and fancy billboards and many well actually not many but essentially all of the lawyer awards that you see hanging on attorney walls are pay to play essentially legal advertising right and these things have nothing whatsoever to do with their ability to win a lawsuit uh, the other hidden secret about law there's this saying that a good lawyer knows the law but a great one knows the judge i love that and, saying it's so funny <laughs> yeah and not only is it funny but it's 30.7 percent positively correlated so on average nearly a third of your outcome is just based on if your judge likes your lawyer yeah. and that's crazy, and it's actually a bit scary. A bit scary is an understatement. It's very <laughs> yeah. scary. And I tell you, I've been on the wrong side of that before. And um, these judges are pretty much automatons. They can do whatever they want. And, oh, yeah. You know, I know and you think you can appeal and... and you have recourse, and yeah, you sort of do. But the chances get really slim when you go down that funnel. So that judge has far too much power to be left in the hands of something like, oh, we went to the same law school and may have been fraternity brothers or sorority sisters or whatever, you know, and and it may have been over the years or, you know, I knew your father or so, you know, some ridiculous things like this. Or And they can socialize together. You know, socializing yes. is perfectly acceptable. The, the lawyer can donate money to the judge's campaign, which mm -hmm. is unbelievably ridiculous. This is crazy that in this system that's supposed to be transparent, that everybody's supposed to be equal in the eyes of the law, the law is blind. Um, it's not that way, is it? Actually, we own the URL, justice isn't blind. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah sadly, it's not. It should be. But you, you've nailed it. I mean, transparency is where it's at. And when I go and speak at law schools around the country, I say every great change in law will come from transparency because things cannot get better until we can see where the problems are. You're absolutely right. So what do we do? So, you know, most people listening probably agree this is a problem. If they're a consumer, if they're a lawyer who knows the judge, they love it because it benefits them sometimes. Absolutely. So yes. what do the consumers do about this problem? Uh, what is the solution? You know, we can all wring our hands together and say this is a very bad thing and it should be fixed and it's a bad thing and it should be fixed. But in the meantime, 
say to my corporate clients, look, if it's unfair, use the unfairness to your advantage. So mm -hmm. let's go and find someone that just flat out doesn't lose before your particular judge and let's hire them for your case. So that's the kind of thing that we do. We had a case last week and uh, we put a longtime family friend in front of the judge and this guy won handily. Those kind of relationships exist. So we say, well, let's go out and find them and hire those people. And, and the other crazy thing as well is that a good lawyer isn't necessarily much more expensive because law is so lacking in transparency, you don't know who the good people are. And the vast majority of lawyers don't work for these big, expensive law firms. A big firm lawyer will beat a small firm lawyer 2.98% more, but 92.3% of wins come from small law firms because the vast majority of lawyers work for small law firms, which mm -hmm is another thing that you can use to your advantage. So our clients win significantly more cases, but they actually wind up paying less than just using a big law firm. Okay. So uh, they tell us what they do, though. Like, what are the mechanics? They go to your website, and what happens next? Uh, it really depends on kind of how they're, how they're doing it. If it's a consumer, our consumer brand is lawyersbywinrate.com. So they go there, they give their details. We have a automated intake form because we can't help everybody. And we don't want to waste your time if we can't give you an edge. So it asks you questions and then the questions change depending on the answers you give. So if you have a divorce case, it'll ask you certain questions. And if you have a property case, it'll ask you other ones. It's the same questions that as if you were sitting before a lawyer. And at the end of that, it's pretty quick, takes a few minutes. We know if we can help you. And we tell you if you can't. And we'll say, you know, congratulations, your case qualifies for a free consultation with a lawyer. So this is one of our lawyers, he's just going to check what you've just said. And then the magic starts. So what we've done is our parent company, premonition has more legal data than LexisNexis, Thomson Reuters and Bloomberg combined. It sounds crazy, but it's a very backwards industry. And we took some of our kind of technical skills and applied it to court data and wound up with this large selection. And with a, some fairly simple algorithms, you can buzz through the 40,000 new cases that are filed every day and figure out the winners and losers. And from there, it's fairly simple to just filter and say, I have a case in Orange County, Florida. I'm before Judge John Kest. It's a contract case. I'm defending. Who do I want? And the computer will spit back someone. So okay, it's this guy. They have 18 straight wins. So what we then do is we try and get hold of that short list of the best lawyers for you, introduce you to them. And you go ahead and if you like them, you choose them. And that's a free introductory service. We make our money off referral fees that are kind of baked into every legal fee. So we're able to do all that initial work for free and it doesn't cost the consumer anymore. So you're basically running a legal referral service then, right? It's similar to that. You have to be extremely careful of what words and things you use to uh, describe these things because uh, bar rules are very restrictive. So okay. at the moment, we're only practicing in 30 states. Okay. So you're practicing in 30 states. And so this is essentially a law firm, right? If you're getting a referral fee from the lawyers you refer the business to. Is yes. A law firm? Okay. Got yeah. We, we, we work through a law firm. We've had a, a three-step plan from the beginning with premonition, but the first was to get the most data which we've done the second was to become the benchmark for litigation which we've also done and then the third is to become the market itself so if you have to have a lawyer why not have a good one if it doesn't cost you anymore right absolutely yeah we're really the only people out there that know who's good and who isn't tell us more about the uh incongruities and the prejudice that slants the legal system, you know, a good lawyer knows the law, a great lawyer knows the judge, et cetera. But is there anything else to that? Anything else you can drill down on and 
give our listeners any advice on how to pick the right lawyer? At the end of the day, you really need to go and look at their cases. And I'm not saying you need to read all of them, but only one third of lawyers actually go to court in the first place. And a lawyer that doesn't go to court is like a rock star that doesn't rock. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you think, well, okay, all these lawyers that go to court, well, half of them usually lose and they can't all win. But if you picked a court case at random from our system and called up both lawyers and say, did you win? They'll both argue till they're blue in the face that they won. My girlfriend is an appeals lawyer and she has to deal usually with the lawyer that did the the case in the lower court. And she said, you would be amazed at the number of times that these guys think that they won, despite the fact that their client is appealing. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's uh, they kind of reverse justify stuff in their head. Well, it was a difficult case, so therefore I won or it could have been worse. So therefore I won or the client was somewhat happy. So therefore I won. And that's not true at all. Just to be, maybe to be fair to the that lawyer who says that, you know, the concept of winning and losing in a case is very murky. You know, of course, when you see it on TV, it's like, oh, you know, the plaintiff won and got a verdict of $10 million, uh, you know, or you watch Aaron Brockovich or whatever, right? They won, mm. right? Yeah. But it's just not that clear (laughs) when when you have things like attorney's fees clauses and then they appeal and it's like i i mean i'll give you an example once i remember a case years ago that i appealed and i appealed i actually won in quotes why did i appeal if i won well i didn't get awarded my legal fees Mm -hmm. and the appeals court did not award them to me either so You could argue that, well, I lost the appeal, but I actually won the case underlying the appeal. But it was because there was a set-off, and, you know, we paid this tiny little set-off, just a few thousand dollars, that we were holding, and that made us lose the darn attorney's fees clause. I mean, what is winning? Like, it's hard to judge sometimes, right? Well, yes, you're you're absolutely right. And, And to those people, I say, okay... Let's talk about outcome. So if you get sued, what do you want to see in the disposition box at the end of the case? Mm -hmm. Do you want to see judgment for plaintiff? No. Do you want to see transferred? No. Do you want to see suggestion of bankruptcy? No. You want to see dismissed. And that's the only thing you want to see. So it makes sense to look for lawyers that nearly always get dismissals for that case type and judge when they're defending. Now, some of those wins will be, quote unquote, better wins than others. Mm -hmm. But when you looked at enough as much legal data as we have, you're talking about a handful. There's usually less than five insiders for every judge. Mm -hmm. And that's the shortlist that you want to go for. And Just because the computer likes someone doesn't mean that they're ideal for you. I had a case, I used the system for myself, and I didn't like the guy because he was an asshole, and I decided that I didn't want to spend two, three years of my life dealing with him. So I went to number two. Number two was busy, was going to trial, couldn't take my case. I went with number three, and it was good, and I got a very good result. So... You also have to use your judgment as well, but at least you know that you're in the right neighborhood and you're not picking a lawyer that is claiming expertise they don't have. Uh, For example, if you walk into practically any major law firm right now, they all have a glossy brochure talking about their expertise in drone law. And most of them have never done a single case. Well, and, and, you know, that's another problem with the legal system is that only one area of law, I guess patent law, is required to specialize. Mm -hmm. If this were medicine, compare it with the medical field where, you know, the doctors need to specialize. And, I mean, you look at these attorney websites and it's absolutely ridiculous. You go to Martindale Hubble, lawyers.com site, and 
what's the specialty? Well, we do bankruptcy. We got some family law. So if, if you want a divorce, we could do that. And well, one might lead to the other. So I guess those are related. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <they're> yeah. <laughs> okay, enough of my morbid humor here. And you know, if you got a criminal case, we'll handle that. And then we could do some complex, high stakes corporate litigation. And then we'll do uh, whatever else. I can't even think of all the areas. But it's ridiculous that they don't need to specialize, right? Well, you know, I half agree with you because we will usually look for a specialist and a specialist will usually be to generalist. And there have been academic studies that show that board certified has a measurable effect. If you don't have anything else to go on, then I would go with someone who is board certified. But there are a lot of attorneys, let's not forget, lawyers are in general horrible business people and are not good at sales and marketing. So many of them can't afford to specialize because they're not good at bringing in a consistent stream of cases in a particular niche. But some of them are, are just good litigators in general. And I would say I would rather have a great litigator in a family law case than just a, a family law specialist because divorce is the only case type where there really aren't winners and losers. You know, everybody loses in, in family court. Right, yeah. And so when, when we pick people for family court, we go by case duration. So we're looking for someone that is fast uh, oh. for a particular judge. Interesting, okay. Yeah, there have been a lot of studies on that. And as Winston Churchill says, when you're going through hell, go quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, in, in Orlando, there's two lawyers we refer to. There's a lady called Donna Hung, who does a lot of litigation, and she's quick. And she knows we watch her numbers. <laughs> so yeah. they need to stay quick if she wants to keep getting cases from us. And uh, another lady, Michelle Berman, she's very fast as well. And... Okay, okay. So, so it's understanding the metrics of of the thing, and you know, I would yeah. guess, I would guess maybe another metric. You know, certainly sometimes it's better to settle. Sometimes you got to litigate it. But a lot of consumers complain that the lawyers, oh, they all just want to settle. You know, they get the case and they, you know, with a rallying cry, I'll yeah. fight for you, and then it's just oh, mm -hmm. settle, 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 sell you down the river afterwards, yep. right? Run what the kind clock of metric, and then... Yeah, run the clock and then settle. What kind of metric do you yep. look for in that realm? Well, I mean, there's, you know, the vast, I don't like to use the word settle because it has two completely different meanings. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of cases have what we call a pretrial outcome. And realistically, you don't really want a lawyer that's going to take your case to trial. It's nice to have one that can, but right. it's a lot more expensive. Oh, sure. Yeah. Really, I'm just looking at the outcome and I don't care whether that was a trial outcome or beforehand. So I'm saying, was this dismissed or did the person get a judgment? And those are the two main things. There's another thing that we kind of briefly touched on earlier, which we also look at, which is judge campaign contributions. So for something like family court that's extremely subjective, we look for someone that has written a large check to the judge. And not only did they write a large check to the judge, that was the only judge they wrote a check for. And the fact so, that that is even legal is absurd, but yeah, another, another <laughs> issue. Yeah. yeah, it's lunacy. But the U.S. is not the only country that does that. They also do that in Bolivia. Right. In Bolivia, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Podunk uh, Corrupt Court does it too, yeah. Right. Yeah, and I'm not saying that that's a good thing or a fair thing, but it is what it is. Yeah. So it tends to indicate that even if the judge has is like Caesar's wife and that does not affect their thinking in any way, which is hard to imagine. That lawyer certainly believes that that is a good judge and someone who understands them when they stand up in court. You operate in England as well, right? Yes, we're in 12 countries. Oh, 12 countries. Which other yes. ones, just out of curiosity? Ooh, let's see. Uh, Brazil. Brazil is a huge market. Mm -hmm. I think we're also in Chile and Canada. Ireland, UK, Netherlands, India, Australia, and New Zealand. Hmm. Yeah, but the vast majority of litigation is is in America. In, in yeah. the UK high courts, we deal with just under 4,000 cases a year. And in America, we deal with 41,000 cases 
every day. Right, right. And on a, I mean, that's not accurate to say without saying it on a per capita basis, but still, the U.S. has more litigation. And, uh, yeah, and 95% of the world's litigation coming from 5% of the world's population. Yeah, but also, you know, that's the same balance with consumerism and prosperity and all the other metrics, right? Uh, I think it comes down to just two words. What's that? Loser pays. Yeah, because yeah you have that loser country, pays in other countries, right? Yeah. yeah, and it just stops this frivolous litigation and what I term file and fish lawsuits. Mm -hmm. But, you know, is that really... I mean, I know all the tort reform people say that and the trial lawyers would argue the opposite, you know, but... I don't know. I don't think it's that easy to bring frivolous cases. Certainly they're out there, but it's not some wanton thing. I mean, lawyers don't want to file frivolous cases, right? In, yeah, especially I mean, especially paid, in federal court. I mean, in federal court, there's some pretty high standards, aren't there? Yeah, but I mean, I've been sued for not having an elevator in a one-story shopping center. <laughs> how, how did that happen? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> I own a shopping center. There's a thing they call them ADA, American Disabilities Act, drive-by lawsuits. And the joke is that the, the plaintiff won't set foot on your property. They'll just drive by. When well, my case, he didn't even bother doing that because he would have seen that it was a one-story shopping center. He just sued, and this guy had filed uh, 150 similar lawsuits. It wasn't like you needed to have one of those little elevators to go up five steps or something like nope. that? Okay. It was nope. a real legitimate one story and wow that's amazing yep. <laughs> yeah uh, now i quote unquote won that lawsuit mm -hmm. but i had to spend ten thousand dollars to get it dismissed there was no winning is there yeah, yeah right and you don't get it back and because there's no disincentive for this in the uk i would get my costs from him sure. and he would say you know that was kind of expensive i'm not going to file anything frivolous against toby again mm -hmm. but that doesn't happen over here, which is why there's a great book I like called Buy This Book or I'll Sue You. <laughs> <laughs> what a great name. Yeah. Oh. And it has all these kind of frivolous lawsuits. My favorite one is there's a lady who witnessed a traffic accident mm -hmm. and sued. Now, you're not supposed to be able to sue for that. And she sued for the loss of her psychic powers. <laughs> <laughs> It gets better because she won and the jury awarded her half a million dollars. Now, mm -hmm. you think if she was really psychic that she would have seen it coming. Right, right. Oh, funny. Oh, that's amazing. Well, in California, they have something called the Stella Awards. The Bar Association oh, yes. uh, does them. Yeah, but here's the thing about it, though. That was uh, named after Stella, which is the case we all heard about, which is the, mm -hmm. the elderly McDonald's lady who, who spilled the McDonald's coffee on her lap and got burned. But, you know, I interviewed the director of a documentary called Hot Coffee on my show. Mm -hmm. And that story is not as it seems, at least to according to the other side of the story, which nobody ever heard except the people who watched that documentary. You know, McDonald's mounted a PR campaign. They hired PR firms to show that this was ridiculous. And there's a lot of reasoning to have the coffee too hot. Some people believe it keeps it fresher longer or something like that. I don't know the details. But there's more to that story than meets the eye. We hear about these frivolous lawsuits, but we're usually only hearing one side of it. And there are two sides to it. I mean, look, I've traveled all over the world. I've been to 83 countries. And one thing I do like about lawyers is they, they make things safer. You know, you go to these other countries that don't have a more, we'll call it, quote unquote, advanced <laughs> legal system. And, you know, things are pretty unsafe. You know, it's um, the fact, the fear of litigation makes people more careful. Is it overboard? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It depends on the case. It's all got to be judged individually. But, you know, thoughts? I, I'm not sure about that because I've read that, you know, pilots as well. There's a thing called target risk. Mm-hmm where when things are too safe, people compensate by adding on risk. So for example, if I drive 10 miles up the road here in Florida, I will see an accident going and I'll see an accident coming back. When I'm in the UK for a month, I will never see an accident. And driving in the UK is objectively significantly more dangerous than driving in the States. The roads are narrower, they twist, they go up and they go down and they have sharp corners and they're faster. And you 
have to pay attention because otherwise you'll be dead. Whereas in the States, you have these big, wide, straight, open roads. It's slow. It's not doesn't feel dangerous. So it doesn't feel bad to eat while you drive and text and check your phone and things like that, which you would never do in England because you would be dead. And because people are now taking on this extra risk and they get distracted, that's when the accidents happen. So there are unforeseen consequences like this. So you look at when things like seatbelts came in, the death rates dropped, but then they went back up again. Mm-hmm. And anti-lock brakes, the death rates dropped, but then they went back up again. So, so you, the theory is people feel emboldened. It's like you feel emboldened because you've got the safety feature, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I have four-wheel okay. drive and ABS, so it's okay for me to drive like a lunatic when it's raining. Yeah. Okay. Whereas if you'd imagine a big, long, sharp spike coming out of your steering wheel, mm-hmm. you would be really careful. Well, okay. <laughs> there, There is that. You know, I don't know. This is stuff we could talk about forever, but yeah. very, very interesting. Anyway, I still, Toby, I love what you're doing. I think it's great, and I think it's really going to uh, hopefully change the world and give people access to, you know, finding the right the right person and, and also thereby giving an incentive to attorneys out there to practice better and, and, you know, win more cases and handle them more speedily and efficiently. Uh, so exactly. it, it's, it's all good. You know, it's all good. Okay, good. Uh, anything else you want to say? Let's wrap it up. I think that was about it, but I really appreciate you having me on the show and um, taking an interest in bringing a bit of transparency to law. Keep up the good work. And Toby Thank Unwin, thanks for joining us. Thank you for listening to The Free Court Show. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the show on iTunes or the platform of your choice. You can find the show notes and resources for today's episode at freecourt.com. Remember that guests' opinions are their own and information is of general nature, so be sure to consult appropriate tax, legal, and other professionals for specific advice.